with this Smithsonian Institution. What's in it? What, what is there? Smithsonian. I insist on saying Smithsonian because I'm thinking of Smithline. So the Smithline, Adele Smithline, Smithsonian Institution. What is in it? Well, it, it's a, uh, a collection uh, that I have housed in one of the apartments in the house that I live in. And uh, I have collected really all kinds of artifacts and clothes and books and samples and all over the world. And I've been around the world three times, so you can imagine I was like the Carly Brothers living in this house and this apartment above me that, that had all kinds of things. But it was this birthday at the same mm -hmm. so I thought it's that time that, uh, you know, I gave it to FIT so that they could uh, let the students really use the things and handle them and see um, the things in other parts of the world. And then um, it got to be, a, I couldn't really take care of it all. I had a, a catalog that went quiet and then sort of couldn't keep that up and then it was a question of hanging it in and uh, housing it. And, um, now these are cars, I don't know, they're very precious yeah. fabrics and all sorts of mm -hmm. and postcards and, and uh, postcards. Yes, and mm -hmm. costumes and things and, mm -hmm. and pictures that my husband would take. And I tell you, I would I have a system about traveling. I would do a lot of research. For example, uh, if we were going to um, Turkey, I was uh, uh, invited by the Turkish government to visit those embroidery school that I was interested in embroidery. And I did quite a bit of research about the you way know, the geography of the country and uh, regions and, and their markets, etc. And I would uh, start off by going to museums and uh, another city that I went to a really the first thing I did was to find out how I could get out because they didn't like it. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I would go to the museums and uh, go to the food market and uh, interested in, in the way people live and cook and what they ate and uh, then see all the, the all interesting uh, sort of touristy things and at the end of the day go to the best bar the best meal we saw the best people <laughs> or well, the best looking man anyway mm -hmm. and that was the plot and plan that I had Another idea that I had was to, uh, I thought I would read everything, you know, and I would pack two or three suitcases and then leave one of them home. I never looked at it. Not that you would rise your, your customers out there. Have you, have you found that you've, you've, uh, you've uh, seen color ideas in, in, the, in the food market? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Yes. As well as the, you couldn't, you couldn't give, uh, FIT, uh, uh, a stand of, of beautiful vegetables, though, very well. That, that was a little according to your husband. He had his pictures on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you, you have to be very careful in, uh, in packing and in selling, you know, and to take things that are foldable and uh, not too heavy. and. Mm -hmm. Easy and yeah, and I usually travel with hangers. My clothes all on a hanger, so that when I get to the place, I can just take out and hang them up in the closet. This business of unfolding them, you know, and uh, having to hang them on hangers is terrible. But luckily, my clothes were, were that short that I could lay them flat on a hanger and put a cellophane mm -hmm. uh, cover over them. And I, all my accessories were in cellophane bags so that I could see through. I never covered anything up. And, and were they were they arranged according to yes? I had to, I had a bag, mm -hmm. a set a see bag, and the belt or the uh, pin or the scarf was right on my hanger with that dress. And then I uh, try to work out about you know shoes and bags and that would go with all my clothes. You are a very organized lady. Well, you have to be, and I have to be in business too. You know, that, that, that there's a certain discipline that you have to have about your life and your working habits. How do you start your day now? Well, 
Is it if it's a Monday, I suppose you're coming in from the country. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Mm -hmm. And uh, on every other day, I'm up, well, even when I come in from the country, I'm up at 6 o'clock. I usually do um, exercise at 7 and have a massage. And then uh, by 8.30 and 9 o'clock, I'm in the place. And uh, what's the first thing you do when you come in? What? What is the first well, thing you do? I usually go to the, the back where the patterns are, pattern makers are. Mm -hmm. And I like to see, you know, just what they're doing with the portions of the clothes. And then I go through the shipping department, because that place is organized that way. And I like to see the way the things are coming through. And then I go to the Houston department, because Thank I want to know what's come in and whether the color is right or, or wrong, or if the scarf match the fabric, you know? And then, um, then I go into both the design, we had two designing rooms, I had someone working with me, and um, we talked to the girls about, you know, what they're working on, and then I go into the showroom, and the there people tell me that Mr. So-and-so was in, or Miss So-and-so was in, and they liked this, they didn't like that. How many lines do you do a year? We do about four. Mm -hmm. That would be uh, spring, spring, summer, summer, resort, resort, and fall. Fall. Mm -hmm. So there isn't properly a winter line, it's fall, winter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we do a small collection in between if we uh, feel that the stores may need some pepping up, you know, mm -hmm. when it comes to the, uh, around Christmas, you know. And you, you said you, you have probably 450 to 500, 500 customers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. What then is your uh, production? Um, how many models, for example, are going to be in, in your, well, shall we say your we have about, We have about, uh, we usually wind up by cutting. 70. Mm -hmm. Not in the not in the, the summer or, or the resort line because the delivery has to be quicker, you see. But the spring, big spring and big fall are usually 70 or 75 models that we do. And um, our customers don't usually come in and buy uh, one or two styles, you see. They buy a range of, of different styles. As I said, we try to dress women. Uh, as a wardrobe, you know, we do everything but active sports. Um, so you have something to wear for daytime and something to um, go to business later if you go to business or a supermarket if you go shopping and um, a, uh, an afternoon dress if they play bridge and a cocktail dress if they're cocktails and an evening dress if they belong to a country club or, or go to big balls. So this is a customer who still wants a cocktail dress. Oh, um, yes. Mm -hmm. you know, not so much in big cities, <coughs> but in smaller cities, where they, uh, one of their great pleasures is to get dressed up. And uh, wear new, new clothes for the party, you see. It's, it's good for their soul. <laughs> so, uh, let's see, where were you in, in checking through uh, as you came here? You, you were in the... Well, I you know, left your designers. No, we we then we work with the sample hands. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we have fittings every other day on models. You see, how many models do you have in the in the house? We don't have any except in the at showtime. Mm -hmm. we have ten. There isn't a house model. No, we we have a girl that we make the collection on, mm -hmm. and maybe a substitute if she is not available. But we don't have any uh, house models. I like to take the clothes and put them on anybody around the place to see how they look, you see. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're doing that constantly. And they test them and they do the sitting down and the raising of yeah. the arm. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a duplicate model that comes in every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we correct uh, our patterns on her, or correct the clothes on her. And uh, she's at average size at 10 or 12, mm -hmm. and then, then it's graded, and then it's cut, but um, it's a full-time job because I get up in the morning, get up and start, do the exercise, and then have to run and, uh, you know, and worry about running a household, 
and uh, all that, all that. You, you, you sort of what? skipped over that, what you did. Yes, I know. Oh, I, I'm telling you now that, uh, you know, I have a, a hat, different hat that I put right. on every hour. Right. And then mm -hmm. I uh, get on the phone to find out what's happening in Greenwich, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. uh, whether the uh, swimming pool was painted, whether they put the water in, or whether the trees were sprayed, or whether the roof is fixed, mm -hmm. or the plumbing works. I mean, it's ready to do. And uh, when I come downtown, and walk all through the place, and, and when anybody comes up to me with a complaint, they say, tell me something good first, because I want to start the day that way. And usually if there's any problems, um, I never um, get myself too uh, upset about it and until the end of the day, and then if there's anything wrong, we discuss it, and I will say to somebody, and I you did tell them so, that's wrong, come in tomorrow, and see what doesn't happen again. Because otherwise, you'd, I'd be a nervous wreck. When you're creating a collection, um, how do you start? You start with the fabric? With the fabric. Mm -hmm. So it's and really the choice of the fabric that in the first place uh, that uh, sort of is going to determine the design, is that correct? I kind of always say it's like baking a cake. It depends on the ingredients you put into it, whether it's a fresh or not. Mm -hmm. And naturally, everything is fabric today. Um, women have. Uh, their undergarments have changed, you see. So the silhouette naturally has to change. And it, you are what you wear underneath, you know. I uh, was very, very funny this, um, this time when I was in China. I unfortunately got a, a respiratory infection and went to a hospital in Shanghai. And uh, the nurses were very interested in what I was wearing when I got dressed to leave. And I put pantyhose on, and of course they, they had no idea. they were wearing flats. Mm -hmm. They'd never seen that. Mm -hmm. But they showed me that they wear longs on and socks. They saw socks and flat shoes. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I had a, a jersey of pads that I whipped up the front, and they got very upset about that. Oh. Knowing that I was a designer, why do I make pants that whip up the front? They showed me that they had buttons, pockets, at their sides, which didn't have one inch of zipper yet, you see. And uh, I said, so I tried to think quickly, and I said, well, make you stand up straight in, you put your stomach in, you uh, have round hips, you, you just will you'll exaggerate that, mm -hmm. you see. Well, I, they, they, I couldn't tell them that. I was <laughs> 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 and, I was mm -hmm. and they were, they, were actually intrigued with the makeup because none of them, they don't even wear lipstick. That's it, you know, absolutely. Did they want to try it? Uh, yes, they did. Mm -hmm. Did they like And I, I had some extra lipsticks, you see, that I wanted to give them, but the uh, younger nurses, you know, took them. But the point is that nobody does one thing in China. You see, the nurse, one of the nurses that I had, on her days off or some weeks, she worked in a ball bearing factory. Mm -hmm. And uh, the girls in the ball bearing factory were nurses on all the time. Children in the city, built of the country, and mm -hmm. the country come to the city. Mm -hmm. So that nobody's a specialist. Mm -hmm. And I like that. They give you a little bit of everything. Now, in, when you were in China, did you uh, come upon a piece of fabric that talked to you that said, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dress? <laughs> in your yeah. collection? I went to the, that, that you could see at the Canton Fair, and I mm -hmm. went to the fair for one day, and uh, I, I tried to, uh, uh, tried to do no business, but it's very strange because it's all controlled by the government, and uh, I was trying to buy some cotton, pure cotton, because we don't have much pure cotton mm -hmm. in this country, it's always mixed with some of it. I had pure cotton, narrow goods, and I said, well, how much is it? See? And uh, uh, the man said, uh, well, uh, uh, how much are you going to buy? And I said, well, I don't know how much I'm going to buy until you tell me how much it is. We argue back and forth that way, you know. And so uh, you, you really couldn't get a price out of it. Did, did you find me to see and buy it? Yeah, yes, I did. And I, I've never seen them packed and uh, shipped so beautifully. You know, I bought some cotton. But um, I... Uh, didn't have the time. I didn't. Uh, I didn't have the time at the plant on fair to look at some silk because I was on a different kind of a tour. I was on an archaeological one, mm -hmm. and we only spent two days in Canton. And 
um, I went into happy with uh, the design, the mm -hmm. reason the coloring, you see, because mm -hmm. uh, it's very difficult for you uh, unless you have experience and know to buy fabrics in a foreign country. The light is different and the people's complexions are different. And I uh, did that in India and found it very difficult. Found that you were surprised when you when I got you here. So yeah. even yeah. even in uh, in England, you know, mm -hmm. the light mm -hmm. is different there. And yeah. when I was buying all the colors, it, yes, mm -hmm. all over. And so you really have to have the experience, and even then you make mistakes. Then when you have the fabric back here, uh, you do cut a pattern is cut. But yeah. you. you you drape, you drape in, in uh, well, I, I, then I had to try the fabric and hold it up to myself or mm -hmm. model and look at it in the mirror, because you can always see the defects in the mirror, because when a woman buys a dress, she stands and looks in the mirror, mm -hmm. and that's the kind of effect that I want to have, a reaction I want to have. You mean the defect as to the consistency of the material, yes, what it does, yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the design, mm -hmm. or whether it repeats, or... Uh, where it hangs, you know, mm -hmm. you can always see that the mirror never lies, you see. Mm -hmm. And um, then, um, after uh, getting an idea of what the fabric does, I will try to um, drape it, and then we have a, an assistant that does a muslin, you see, a mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, a sketch is made, and, and then it's cut and fitted. And you know, and see it when it's and you were and you were there after it's been cut and set and the fill it, yeah, after yeah. it's been put together. Has it ever done on a on a dressmaker's um, dummy of course? Dummy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a our dummies that are naturally made in proportion mm -hmm. of the models that we're fitting. Mm -hmm. So you can see very quickly mm -hmm. and I'm very careful about grain and mm -hmm. Where clothes hang from the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Then do you ever scrap the whole thing and decide oh, yeah. that this yeah. is going to work? Yeah. Yeah. Many times, many times. Mm -hmm. Even when it's finished, they look at it and won't show it unless I think it will mm -hmm. behave and perform well mm -hmm. and fit into somebody's life, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, as a woman, you, you understand a, a woman's body and uh, they, uh, it's, you can always sense. I mean, I've been working at it long enough to know it if the grain will be raw or whether it will work right or not. And then, of course, the engineering of how to get into it and how to put it together. Mm -hmm. So it looks like no human hand touched it. <laughs> uh, I think we try to get do you ever, Do you ever let it hang uh, the way uh, PMA is, is yeah. said to have done? Mm -hmm. If, if you wait working it, on the way to and let mm -hmm. it stretch, you see. Yes. Well, I don't uh, cut too many things on the bias because the factory don't know how to make them. Mm. You know, that, that you need a very small factory with concentrated or very experienced dressmakers mm -hmm. to do that, and that's gone out of the world. You know. How many factories do you use, different factories? We have mm -hmm. about uh, 13 or 14 factories, and they each do different things, different kinds of so things. So the model of the dress is made here? Yes. And then it, it yeah, is a pattern is made. A pattern is made, I see. And then it's cut and sent to a factory mm -hmm. who um, brings it for a correction mm -hmm. or an approval. Mm -hmm. and then it's graded, and then a lot is cut. Graded as to size, is that my like grading mm -hmm. means? Mm -hmm. And then every dress that comes in from the factory is put on a form to be sure that it's sized properly mm -hmm. and that it doesn't have any flaws. Every it, single every one? Dress, every dress that's examined on a form. Mm -hmm. And how many factories did you say you Fifteen. Fifteen? Fifteen. Mm -hmm. Where about side dress? They're all down the side street. I see. Because they're uh, close by. Yes, and uh, their rent was not as expensive as Seventh Avenue. Mm -hmm. And uh, they all, all have, well, we have experienced workers, you know. We've been uh, with the same factories for many, many years, and they get to know how we work and what we expect and how to press and how to you know, all the goods that comes in is examined before it goes out. Now, what is uh, what is your annual production uh, in numbers of garments? Well, we make about thirty thousand. Do you really? Mm -hmm. So these four hundred and fifty, five hundred ladies buy many, many. Oh yes, pieces. 
Well, I mean, now, when I said 450, that stores. 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 Uh, not ladies. Stores. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not ladies. I wondered. No, no, no. Stores. 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 Stores.
to see how she's been working and she's just talented. Mm -hmm. So I knew her family, knew her and her brother for many years. In fact, I was at her wedding. Mm -hmm. So it was a great talent. So, um, great talent. Haven't you uh, continued to make certain styles that uh, were uh, considered by some to be uh, out, as they say, despite uh, uh, what was supposed to be out. I think of the jacket dress, which is really a very, uh, it makes a great deal of sense. And, and there are many women who mm -hmm. would want to continue wearing a dress and jacket. Well, I, I tried to give a very variation to every, every line that we do. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful having um, a young daughter who is my boss. She says, Mother, don't do that. <laughs> it looks old fashioned. And she keeps me on John Doe. John Doe. She says, Great face. She says, Great yeah. player. Yeah. And uh, she really knows. And I can tell you that uh, for many years, uh, I didn't think she'd ever work with me. I worked here. And uh, when she first started, she wore Aunt Sylvia dresses. And I raised the flag the day she decided where that guy goes. <laughs> and I'm very happy when she does. And uh, she uh, keeps me young, keeps me alert. And I think if you're, you know, uh, in things and uh, attuned to what's going on in the world, you, you uh, wouldn't want to make a dress and jacket if somebody wants it because people are wearing shirts and skirts. Mm -hmm. So you just have to get rid of it for sure. Well, it, isn't it very funny, uh, it, it sometimes happens that uh, a thing like the, the dress and the jacket will go away for a while and some flash in the pan type will suddenly discover this great new idea mm -hmm. of, of the dress, especially the sundress with, mm -hmm. the, yeah. with the jacket that, well, the, the, the construction of it is different by the, by the time you say, you know, and the, the approach to it is different. And we, uh, we used to, you know, put hip pads in the, in the jacket here. Yeah. Hip pads? Hip pads, yeah. To make them stand out. And we used to put pads in the hip pads. And the mother had a mug in the front of the mm -hmm. jacket here. We don't do that anymore. Even though it's a dress and jacket, the whole approach is different. So there are some women that, that uh, find it very practical particularly with air conditioning coming in. They mm -hmm. don't want to wear a sweater mm -hmm. and they don't want to wear um, one sleeve, you know, to make a sleeveless dress and they need to make a sleeveless dress or a short sleeve dress and put a jacket on it. Because you do go into an air conditioned uh, restaurant or an air conditioned um, theater or movie and you have to have something over enough some women to manage with a soul. You know, and wear it and hold it gracefully, but lots of women don't. They want to be bothered, and they don't want to wear sweaters. So you have to make them a jacket. There's always a reason for things happening in fashion that makes for good fashion. Very, very profound statement, <laughs> I would say. I think you've been, on the whole, more innovative than than people sometimes realize, mm -hmm. because your your forte, of course, has been doing uh, a sophisticated, yet traditional not traditional kind of dress. Say. Well, well uh, not see, traditional, I, I but, try to, but try to figure not out anything uh, that, that cries out. Well, yes, sir. I don't make, uh, you know, clothes for actresses that make an entrance, you mm -hmm. see, that's what you mean. But um, my uh, customers always tell me that they feel very well dressed and they a great admired when they were in a bell session and that makes me very happy and makes me want to do more and more things that are attractive mm -hmm. and pleasant to their pleasing to their husbands. I had a woman tell me that the first time she could afford to buy in a bell dress her husband proposed to her and she'll never be at least very happily married, she'll never be at me as long as she buys clothes so we buy in bell sensing. That's how nice surreal isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that explains why you outlasted many who have come and gone mm -hmm. and you and you're still doing wonderful work. Well I love it. 
and I think, and I always have to assume that I'm never there. And there's a certain sense of quality and, and a fitness of things that I insist upon. And I think that, that you know, appreciate it. And that's why I've been working all these years. Can you think of anything that we haven't touched on that, that you, you would like to add? I don't think so. No, I think that uh, my uh, sole purpose is to see that women are dressed well. I mean, the reason I'm in business is to see that um, women are uh, happy and uh, feel secure in the clothes and to still make money on Otherwise, I have no reason to live. And it's all deliberately thought out and deliberately planned. And I'm disciplined to think in that way. And you always have it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Always. We always have a plot and a plan about the way the collection is going to be put together, in what direction we're going to go, what we think is right, do or die, and then we follow through. We have to have a plan. And, and, and the best plan is the kind that doesn't show. Yes. And it, it has to relate to uh, a woman's way of life. I found that um, we have a limited number of customers in a town, you know, we usually sell a department store and a specialty store. And I understand and know that a woman that goes into a department store is usually a different kind of customer that goes into a specialty store to buy. And uh, of course that's changing gradually because Everything is all getting <laughs> mixed up. Yeah. I, I try not to be open to everybody. I, you know, I'm not doing a, a way out sport clothes or because people don't expect that of me. You see, they, they, uh, I know my customers and they want to be comfortable and have um, not too many ideas on a dress because that makes them nervous. It makes me nervous too. <laughs> so they never, never close their gussy up. Well, you know, I, I have found that you can't get a woman in the intimacy of the fitting room at the point of sale a new color, a new fabric, a new silhouette, and a new neckline all at once. Mm. They, they, you know, they think, well, the husband's like it, well, the children like it, and they don't feel comfortable. And the whole point in dressing is to have a security and a um, a savoir faire and what you're doing, you see. And you can't combine all those things at once. I'm talking about the majority of women, there's always one or two that, you know, will uh, have a split up to the label or something <laughs> and uh, want to be dramatic. Yeah. Um, well, that, that really that's why you're the designers that mm. would do that sort of thing. That really sums it up in mm this -hmm. sort of thing. Yeah. And as I said, I think that. You've said yourself, you've explained why, why you have uh, been so enduring mm -hmm. and so wonderfully enduring for yeah. such a long time. Okay. We take Mademoiselle Chanel. She never really changed her style in all years. It's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There's always that Chanel suit and it's marvelous. How much better can it be than good? <laughs> True. Mm -hmm. I think we, uh, I think we're coming to the end thank of this, of the film. I certainly thank you very much. Well, thank you, I'm very talking to you. Have a good one.